Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning will begin in the heart of downtown Milwaukee. The Wisconsin Center District is a proud member of this community and an important gathering place for families. And one of the key missions is to create and sustain jobs, income, and prosperity in the greater Milwaukee community. Here to tell us more about the Wisconsin Center District and all that it has to offer is Russ Starkle, who's president and CEO of the WCD. How are you? Good. Good, Andrea. Welcome. Uh, thank you for having us. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Russ. And I do want you to tell us more about the Wisconsin Center District and its mission. Well, you know, the Wisconsin Center District, as he said, is there to sustain jobs, bring economic uh, impact to the city of Milwaukee and southeast Wisconsin, mm -hmm. for that matter, and to can you continue uh, being a, a pillar of the community, helping Milwaukee go forward. So yeah. we've got three facilities, and uh, we're doing that as we speak. Yes, and those three facilities, that would be the UW-Milwaukee Panther Arena, the Milwaukee Theater, and the Wisconsin Center, which holds conventions and things of that nature. Correct. Uh, you said it very eloquently. Yeah, we have three facilities covering six square city blocks of downtown Milwaukee, and uh, we're there to serve the community of uh, southeast Wisconsin. And particular Milwaukee. Yeah, and we will talk about each of those facilities uh, a little more in detail uh, later in the show, but uh, it's governed by an unpaid 17-member board of directors, which is appointed by the governor, Milwaukee County Executive, the mayor of Milwaukee, and the Milwaukee Common Council president. What type of decisions does this board make? This board is 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 fantastic. They they are our guidance and our, our, our beacon to, to ensure that we're serving the community. A uh, great bunch of people. We have uh, representatives from the food and food and beverage industry. Mm -hmm. We have representatives from the hotel industry. Uh, these 17 unpaid members uh, uh, make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to, uh, along with our mission and our vision, and, and serving again Milwaukee. And mm -hmm. they do a great job at it. And the history of the district, it was created uh, back in 1994, and it was actually uh, to fund, build, and operate what started out as the Midwest Express Center. It's changed names a few times, Just but a few. Just a now few. the Wisconsin Center, and right. uh, continue operating those other facilities. Right. Before the uh, 94 statue, we were part of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, city ran the facility, the Mecca. If right. everybody remembers the old Mecca, you had the, we called uh, lovingly the old VCR convention center attached <laughs> to, the, to the Milwaukee Auditorium and then the, uh, the, the arena. Mm -hmm. So in 94, under Governor Thompson, we, they established what we call now the uh, Wisconsin Center District. And it created the current uh, format that we have. And it created the building the convention center and uh, going forward from there. And talking about uh, what's happening currently, uh, two years ago the district authorized uh, to issue bonds for a new basketball arena, Correct. which is coming along nicely. You should <laughs> needless see it. to if, say, if you haven't been downtown, take a look. This, uh, the, you can see it taking shape. You can see what it's going to look like. And yes, you are correct. So, will this new arena be a part of the district as well? Um, we own the Wisconsin Center District. Will own the new. Uh, arena, mm -hmm. but the Bucks are going to sole operate it and do what they what they need to do to make that building go. So yes, uh, we're going to kind of be part of it, but the Bucks are going to run it, and we're just going to be there to help them uh, whenever they they need help. Yeah, and the BMO Harris Bradley Center. I mean, it has played such a role in the community for so many years. It's going to be uh, kind of uh, bittersweet yes, to it see it uh, be. Uh, taken down, so how is that going to happen? Well, when uh, Secretary of Administration, uh, our board chair, Scott Neitzel, certifies the New Bucks Arena is certified to play, then by statute, uh, the the uh, Bradley BMO Harris Bradley Center has to come down with 180 days. Oh. And uh, yes, it's going to be a bittersweet. I mean, the Bradleys, when they built that uh, to the community, it was a great gift, but it's it served a great purpose, and yeah, it's going to be missed. Yeah, I mean, it holds so many memories. It Even has. for me, I worked for the Bucks for 16 oh, wow. seasons as a dancer and a game day host, and just so much happened in that building. And I think that's how a lot of people in the city and surrounding areas feel about that building. So, like I said, very bittersweet. But you know what? As it goes down, we're going to have a new uh, a new era. Yeah. And the new Bucks Arena with the the new Bucks leadership is going to make that 
a tremendous facility for people to go to. So yeah. come on out. This is the next chapter. It is the needless next chapter. To say. And the district does not receive property tax money or federal, state, or local subsidy. So operations, uh, this is interesting. It's uh, funded by like hotel tax and uh, the taxes on uh, car rentals and food and beverage sales. So uh, I never really yeah. put that together. That's very true, uh, and it's only in Milwaukee County. Okay. So we've got uh, we've got four taxes: uh, hotel tax in the county, we have a, a hotel tax in the city, mm -hmm. and we have a food and beverage tax, and we have a rental car tax. So basically, these taxes are user fees. It's people coming in and using these uh, these entities while they're in the county of Milwaukee. If you want to eat have a dinner, you pay a little bit of tax that goes towards uh, the funding of the convention center and, and, and that. So it's, it's that type of tax. Okay, and moving on uh, within the district, we have the UW-Milwaukee Panther Arena, which is, of course, used for more than just basketball. Oh, absolutely, and, and if you haven't come out and seen the new UW Panther Arena, you need to come out and see it. Last year, we spent uh, $4 million, uh, along with the Admirals, Harris Tour, put in $2 million. So it's $6 million renovation to the Panther Arena, and we've replaced the lighting. We've got free Wi-Fi, new seats, scoreboard. I mean, new concession stands, new food uh, items. But yes, as you said, we host more than just uh, basketball. We have the Milwaukee Admirals. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Milwaukee Wave, professional indoor soccer. Uh, we have the Bruce City Bruisers, our ladies roller derby. But we hold concerts. We've had the robotics uh, competition. We have school graduations. So the 1950 building, uh, Panther Arena, that is a very good building and it's functional and it serves many entities, not just basketball. That is the truth. And uh, moving on to the Milwaukee Theater, that has a century-long legacy and uh, it's a place for not only cultural life but civic as well. And uh, all eyes were on the Milwaukee Theater uh, for one of the Republican presidential Absolutely. debates uh, last year. And how important is something like that for the city? Well, it's huge. Uh, the economic impact that that brings to the city, the Visibility. I mean, that's international visibility that brings to the great state, yeah. uh, city of Milwaukee and the state of Wisconsin. It sells people that, you know what, Milwaukee's a big time player and we need to go see Milwaukee. You know, you bring it up that the theater, uh, that's another venue that brings many events together. I mean, it's just not, like you said, the debate. It's just not theater. It's, con it's just not concerts. Uh, it holds, uh, we had uh, wrestling in there. Uh, We've had boxing in there. So it's, again, a facility that was built in the early 1900s, renovated in 2002 mm -hmm. to serve the, uh, the people of Milwaukee, and it does a great job. Yeah, and what people should pay attention to the next time they go into the Milwaukee Theater is how there is that uh, traditional flair from that century-old look, but you guys have also done a great job of kind of uh, putting that 21st century modern yes. look to it as well. We modernized it, but kept it old. Yeah. If and that's if possible. That's, <laughs> and that's really neat. That's what I, mean, I want to yeah. do as I grow old. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yes. no, what do I say? Uh, but no, but you're very true. I mean, the Milwaukee Theater, if you haven't been to it, you need to come down to it. Mm -hmm. And you know what's more exciting is stay tuned because you're going to see a little bit of a name change. And I think the people that uh, when they see it are going to be, yeah, that's Milwaukee. And that's going to be cool. Yeah, and so you're going to unveil new signage and all of these yes, things. And the only thing I would say to our viewers is that this new name will scream Milwaukee. Yeah, absolutely. And people <laughs> will say, yeah, they got it. And, yeah. And that's good because it's a great partnership that we're entering into. Got it right. That's for sure. And uh, we talked about uh, the Republican presidential debate that came to the Milwaukee Theater and there are a long list of dignitaries yeah. that have stood on that stage over the years going all the way back to 1912 when President Teddy Roosevelt came to Milwaukee. Right. Uh, were you around then? Just kidding. Just uh, kidding. Let me think. <laughs> uh, just, I missed him by about a couple days. <laughs> no Russ, I don't mean any disrespect. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No but there are some other dignitaries that you have been around yes. to witness. Um, uh, there was was, uh, and I don't know if you were here for this either, but 1962, President John F. Kennedy no. was at the Milwaukee Theater. 1964, Reverend Dr. Martin yes, Luther King Jr. That, that was a great thing. I wasn't here for it, but that that was great. There are stories and that history me. that lingers. And then this, I know you saw. 
2010, President Obama yes. spoke not once but twice at the Milwaukee yes. Theater. In fact, uh, <laughs> let me tell you a little story. It was funny. It was when he was here campaigning. He was campaigning against uh, uh, oh, the, the young lady that ran for president this last time. Uh, Hillary Clinton. Clinton. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. And they were campaigning together, and they were both here. And uh, President Obama took half of our administrative offices in uh, Hillary Clinton took the other half and she used my office as her staging area so it was pretty cool to see those two interacting and, and coming here campaigning and, and again it shows that Milwaukee is a big-time city and yeah. it was good to see him and if you've never met President Obama he's a class act well you're just so he lucky to be able to say that <laughs> to talk to everybody it, it, and, and he was genuine so that was really cool well my question did you take a picture of uh, Madam Secretary sitting at your desk with your nameplate on the desk. No, Tell me because that. that was kind of like Secret <laughs> Service wasn't uh, wasn't too keen on that. So we, we kind of just stayed our distance. It's and, your and, office, but they're and, still and running yes, things. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. It's not my office then. So, well, I yes. think that it's awesome that there's so much history that can be talked about. And whereas you and I may not have witnessed uh, some of these events, right. there are people in our city that were there. And okay. that's what makes all of it so special. And uh, finally, there's the Wisconsin State. Center. So it's not only used uh, locally, uh, the goal is to attract tourism to Correct. the city uh, when it comes to conferences and other events, which, needless to say, brings money to our local economy. Correct. And you know, that's that's the real key is our partners with uh, Visit Milwaukee. And Visit Milwaukee does a great job of bringing in conventions, mm -hmm. and that's what they're there for. And they've uh, that's that's what brings the bread and butter to Milwaukee is is these large conventions. People coming from San Diego, Dallas, they come here, leave their money, they have fun, they see what Milwaukee is, and they tell their friends who come back. So that's a big thing that we do. But the convention center is just not uh, conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, we hold uh, dinners, we hold charity events, we hold. Uh, uh, graduations. We had volleyball the last three weeks uh, up in our exhibit hall. So again, it's a multi-use building that we can adjust to to use for what a client might ask for. So it's it's a it's a very well equipped and set up building for different types of. Uh, and the different types of things. Yeah, and I had uh, one of the representatives from Visit, Visit Milwaukee here, and uh, we talked about the importance of being able to promote the fact that there are skywalks that right. go to and from the hotels, that there are major landmarks and nightlife and festivals during the Correct. summer within uh, walking distance. So all of these things are extremely important when you are so-called selling the city Correct. to people because when you have conventions and things of that nature, they really can pick any place on the map because every city has a convention yep. hall and things of that nature so there's a competition and when we continue to build downtown and do different things that is only adding to what Milwaukee has and to offer you're right and and you're absolutely correct the competition for these conventions are huge so yeah. you have to set yourself apart and with the new construction of the Bucks Arena and hopefully down the road we can tie all this in to have one great entertainment area so where you can go from the Hilton all the way to see a Bucks game without ever having to really go out in the cold. And that, in Milwaukee that's, that's kind of huge. <laughs> I mean, think about it if you know if you you have a choice of going to the land of Mickey ears or Milwaukee in the cold you know you're going to probably choose you know land of Mickey ears but if we can set ourselves apart which the visions are, are people our leaders are visionaries we're, we're going to get that and we're there right now and we just got to keep going pushing Good stuff. forward. stuff. I love it and a uh, uh, prime example you've got the uh, Women of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, wow. who will be hosting, who are currently hosting the right. Central Regional Conference at the Wisconsin Center. Uh, the last time the AKAs brought their regional convention here was over a decade ago. Right. So, how important is it for you to be able to bring things of this nature to the center? Well, let's just use uh, AKA 2,500 people, mm -hmm. 3,000 hotel rooms, I think $2.4 million economic impact. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. And you know what? We love to have those type of uh, conventions come to town because that's that's what they bring us. We specifically love AKA because you know why? They came back. <laughs> they know how good Milwaukee is and they chose to come back to a great city, to the great people here, and we're ready to 
to really show them a good time. So yeah. we appreciate them being here. And I love AKA too. It's my I sorority why too. I got your sorority. <laughs> yeah. Did you have now, a hand in bringing uh, them? No, I had nothing to do with it, but I think it's absolutely wonderful to yes. see all of these women, strong, professional women, come together to take care of business, and we will be finding out more about that convention in the next segment. But before I let you go, uh, I wanted to mention there are job opportunities that are right. open within the Wisconsin Center yes, District. Yes. So if you would, tell the people at home how oh, they can wow. look those up. We have. We have many jobs open, part-time, full-time. I mean, the, these these positions are, are good-paying jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in a good environment. Uh, uh, the people are treated with a lot of respect, given the latitude to do what they do want to do while on the job in performance of their official duties. But if you want to look at it, go to our website. It's uh, uh, www.wcd.org. Uh, download an application, uh, fill it out, get it to us. And, and let's get you in here for some interviews. But again, we do have some really good part-time and we do have some full-time jobs open. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. I love it. Thank you for stopping yeah. by. Right. Well, You're always you fun to talk Andre. to. Well, you make, you, you bring it out of me. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Russ, you take care of yourself. Thanks, Andrea. All right. Appreciate it. Russ Starkel is the president and CEO of the Wisconsin Center District. And for more information, you can go to WCD.org. When we return to our Issues Milwaukee, we're going to talk to members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated about the 83rd Central Regional Conference, which is happening through April 9th at the Wisconsin Center. We'll find out about that and a community event that you can take part in right after this.